It's time for Mac Break Weekly. Andy, Renee, and Alex are all here to talk about Apple pulling call kit from China. WWDC, it's just two weeks out. And our wish list for FaceTime and iOS 12. It's all coming up next on Mac Break Weekly. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for MacBreak Weekly is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is MacBreak Weekly, episode 611, recorded Tuesday, May 22nd, 2018. C7 to Edison. MacBreak Weekly is brought to you by Slack. Slack is a collaboration hub that lets you organize your team's work into channels where everyone is included, relevant information is in one place, and new team members can easily get up to speed. Learn more at slack.com. And by Rocket Mortgage from Quicken Loans. Home plays a big role in your life. That's why Quicken Loans created Rocket Mortgage. It lets you apply simply and understand the entire mortgage process fully so you can be confident you're getting the right mortgage for you. Get started at rocketmortgage.com slash MacBreak. And by Molecule. Molecule is the world's first molecular air purifier that reduces symptoms for allergy and asthma sufferers. For $75 off your first order, visit Molecule.com and enter the promo code MacBreak. It's time for MacBreak Weekly, the show where we cover the latest Apple news. Joining us, the entire MacBreak Weekly team has assembled. Mr. Rene Ritchie from Montreal and imore.com. Hello, Rene. Leo, you've got to yell out just Mac Break Assemble. Mac just, Break Joss Whedon assemble. never gave it to us. Yes, there it is. <laughs> there it is. Oh, it's so great to be here. They're all comic book nerds. I'm just playing along. Also, Andy Inako from the uh, beautiful Inatko.com, I H N A T K O.com. Thank you. And the celestial waste of bandwidth. That is his website. Mm. And from the Pixel Core, it's Alex Lindsay. Oh, I hello, like hello. the shot. This is nice. You've got an arm, a stuffed armadillo behind you. I, well, you know, it's 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 an, it's important for most shows to have a stuffed uh, armadillo of I'm, any uh, kind, a stuffed I'm animal of any in, kind. Yeah, they're very popular here in Virginia. I'm in Virginia. You're in Virginia. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm at Sweetbriar College visiting uh, Aaron Mailer, a friend of mine. And, oh, uh, nice. He's and um, anyway, he's got the. Armadillo. He collects gonna, armadillos, apparently. I don't know if he collects armadillos, but... but <laughs> he's got uh, one. I plan, yeah, he's got at least one. <laughs> he's yeah, got so. at least one. Uh, welcome, gentlemen, on this fine day as we prepare just two weeks from WWDC. We're kind of trying to figure out what's going to be happening at Dub Dub DC. It's just the beer bash this year. They're just going to do the just, beer bash. Just That's the all. fun. Yeah. Just the fun. The press <laughs> has been invited Good news. Did you get your Never. invites? <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, of course you did. Tim Cook calls you personally. Says no, we would be no. very disappointed if you Does did he not know? come. Does he know this earlier? Does he not care about WWDC until he has to take the stage? Ah, uh, that's a good question. They don't worry Tim with his little stuff. That's probably true. Uh, June 4th, uh, I'm hoping, and we t by the way, 10 a.m. will be the uh, live stream 10 a.m. Pacific. We will, as usual, uh, be talking over it. Um, uh, that's a Monday, and uh, Megan Tech Maroney Theater. and I, yeah, and whoever whoever's not going is glad is welcome to join us. San Jose, California, the McHenry Convention Center. That's where the WWDC is. I'm hoping, we all are hoping, that we will see new MacBooks there. Um, we'll probably we'll certainly see uh, iOS 12, Mac OS yes. 10.14, TV OS 12, Watch OS 5. And Siri predicted a new brighter Siri as well. 90% sure that's the same text as last year. <laughs> oh, really? Is it? <laughs> well, it, 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 you, you might think it's probably the next 10 years, too. It's like, well, Siri's going to get a little smarter. I mean, not with all of this stuff. Every year. What should I uh, ask Siri to demonstrate this? When's WWDC or? What are we going to see at WWDC? <laughs> what are we going to see at WWDC? You can find out all about WWDC ah. on Apple's website. She changed it. The PR team got to her. That's what happened. What can we expect at WWDC? I'm so excited. 
You can find out all about WWDC so, on Apple's website. A few days ago, she said something like, I'm going to be smarter, right? Yeah, and she was going to get a new home in a nice mesh house, which sounds like that was the actual HomePod release, not the oh. WWDC thing. But yeah. why do you think they took that out? Because it was the oh, wrong sure. release. <laughs> no, I'm sure we'll get a whole slew. Every year they put up a whole slew of them. Um, it's, some people were probably just poking around before they were ready. And then we'll get like the WWDC app with its hilarious fake uh, session names and all of Siri's Oh, sassy yeah, that's theory. right. That happens too. According to Cina in the Apple supply chain, the uh, company's preparing a less expensive $199 HomePod under the Beats brand. That would be a good that time to announce. That sounds totally it. likely. I absolutely have. That's I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that's could I, be a I pill. Could, if, we're reduced if to is, rumors at this point. That's all we can do. Well, yeah. Well, it, it's because Apple. If Apple were another company, they could definitely do that. They could simply build a pretty good Bluetooth a Bluetooth speaker, add an ASIC, add enough smarts to it to just like give it like the iPhone five, iPhone six, uh, CPU. And take it off from there, but they're right. not going to do that. They're not going to. At this point, they're still. I don't think that they're ready to start devaluing the cost of like uh, entry into the home part home pod system. Plus, why wouldn't they do it like in the? If they're going to do it, they're going to do it like in the in the fall or the or the winter and try to get some of that Christmas money that they were supposed to get last year with the home pod. According to Strategy Analytics, uh, you know, Apple doesn't say how many home pods are sold. They don't break that stuff down. But according to Strategy, other. <laughs> other others doing quite well they say more than a half a million home pods sold during the first quarter that's only about 10 percent of the smart speakers but still you know, the supply chain stuff is so tough like there, there could just be a next generation beats pill coming or it could right. be a beats pill that has they don't know the, what it the, is. Uh, the w1 chipset the way that all the beats headphones now have the w1 chipset like you see a bunch of schematic or you hear someone talking or you see and then suddenly it's this huge rumor but most of the time they extrapolate 99 percent of it and not, not all of them know apple as a company very well so right your your value can vary right mm. plus has apple ever like given a beats release like primacy of presentation i don't think they've they, mentioned it's usually, i don't think they ever have even mentioned beats on any of their events i mean when they when they had the w2 chip they mentioned that oh there's going to be there's a new version of, of uh, beats headphones that will pair as easily as airpods but oh okay no, it's still okay. But, but, but it's not the <laughs> it's not the you don't bring somebody out onto the keynote stage no. to show off something with the beats logo on it yeah so. yeah Well, thanks yeah. for joining us on Mac Break Weekly this week. Next week, no, I mean, more I mean, speculation rumor, the, about what will happen in two weeks. That, <laughs> the rumors are that the, the MacBook Air replacement has been pushed out. You know, like that's, that's WWC is famous for that. They were going to launch the Apple TV at WWC, but it wasn't quite ready. So it went to September. They were going to launch the MacBook Pros at WWDC, and they weren't quite ready. So they went to October. So it's all, and especially with the Macs, uh, Intel is having so much, so much trouble with. 14 nanometer, never mind 10 nanometer. And now I think I fell asleep and I woke up and there was a whiskey lake somewhere between Cannon Lake and Coffee Lake. And I, and I can't even keep track anymore. But if the MacBook mm. Pros are ready for Cannon Lake, if the iMacs are ready for Cannon Lake, we could see all those spec those spec booths come. Well, that's that's and, not and unusual. I think that also WWE's. with the Apple TV, uh, I, you know, when it didn't come out, it ended up doing a much more developer centric uh you know, developer conference. <laughs> so, so I think that there's there, there might be some advantage to having it be something that you know, if, if they don't have a lot of the big hardware to release, so there's some advantages to for the developers to have it much more focused on on them. Some years there's no new hardware. Well, They've done that several times. Right. Yeah. Well, also there's the WWDC starts at the uh, as soon as they start stacking the chairs in the in the, in the first keynote. Then when the developer start the developer keynote starts, all these sessions start. The first hour and a half of the show is really just for media analysts, fans, and the public. Uh, after that, that's when the entire show becomes about uh, uh, about developers, and that's why we really want to talk about all the different updates to operating systems because. Every it's I, I it's a uh, it's hard to come up with another year when Apple had so much in play at the same time. Um, they've already they've already been saying that uh, iOS excuse me the new version of Mac OS is going to be pretty much a let's get the fit and finish right and let's let's go into the back of the drawer to get as opposed to uh, uh, let's roll out huge new features as opposed to every previous WWDC when they have brought. Mac OS, the love and the attention and the engineering and the advanced engineering that we've come to love and expect. But watch OS 
needs all the new hooks, all the new hooks for uh, for health. The uh, uh, iOS has to. There's uh, uh, <laughs> iOS, tvOS, all the sort of stuff that needs to like have. It's. I believe it's all com- coming towards a convergence point sometime next year or the year after that. Where as opposed to being with the same logo and having shared features, it really seems like Apple is trying to build towards like the one the the, the one ring to rule us all, so to speak. So this could be a really big WWDC for stuff that people are go- that developers are going to have to know about if they're going to have a good time developing Apple hardware and software over the next two years. Good, well said, Andrew. Just want calendars on my HomePod OS update. <laughs> I'm going to keep it simple. Uh, so is it just so? I'm just to clarify: is it the same thing Siri said last year, or you were making a joke? No, I think the I think Siri yeah. says she's getting smarter for several years in a row. I don't think okay. that's okay. So it really isn't a <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> no, but they almost okay. always like a week or so out, they put a whole bunch of Siri responses right. in there just to have fun with. I know. was just not getting. I wasn't getting anything interesting. Also, remember that Siri is Siri isn't like any of the other OS releases. New features just simply show up. Right. There's nothing to install. There's and also. D- uh, dangerous for Apple if they really want to get people to understand how good this thing is. There is no like new new dingbat on the screen to uh, no when they restart their when they restart Siri for the first time a screen says hello Siri is new would you like to let's let's spend some time getting you used to the brand new Siri features no you just hear from you just you're at somebody's house and you hear them give a command that you've never heard anybody give Siri before and that's how you learn that Siri now knows how to like warm butter for the waffles well, that it's also or just making turn my apple tv on and i think that i think that that's siri actually one of the TV things on. i think one of the one of the genius things that apple did with siri re- more recently was what was, was the the quote unquote ad uh, with the rock which was really a training on how to use siri yeah you know because yeah, everything yeah. that he, they showed in that ad was was all the things Stuff that you, you didn't know normally siri could think do. of yeah <laughs> exactly and yeah and, and that was you know making sure that you're getting the full value out of the product um, which i think is you know what you know there's I think a lot of a lot of companies uh, don't take this seriously enough. You have software development, and then you have hardware development, and what most people skip over is wetware development. That's uh, <laughs> training you know, the users on how to use your product. Uh, you know, most of us don't. You know, we get a microwave, and we don't know anything about what it can actually do. I mean, I just want to know how to put the time in, and then I move on. Uh, but if I knew how to do that and how to make it, I might think that it was twice as valuable as it is. And and so it's actually one of the cheaper ways to do development is wetware. And I think that that was one of the great things about those ads. And I think they could probably afford to do a lot more of those to make sure that people are really getting how useful it can be. The yeah. rock is so it's like more than a kitchen. Type. Okay. Let Annie, then, then, then uh, Renee, <laughs> oh. I'll jump in and mediate. <laughs> The rock, sorry, Renee know. said Renee said that uh, the rock was likable and then Andy what were you going to say uh no I'm just uh, <laughs> all, uh, all, all all I was gonna go, gonna go off on is just that uh I forget it it's <laughs> oh geez Louise <laughs> you throw, no, oh already, my god said, I already said it no <laughs> this is the there's so much room for basic stuff like I remember before you'd say Siri take a selfie and it would turn on the rear camera and that was just non helpful right. now it at least turns on the front facing camera but like Siri, turn on my Apple TV. It doesn't. Now Siri is yelling at me. But it doesn't do that. Like there's Siri, turn on the flat. Like, there's so many what I would call low hanging fruit that they could just round out the existing feature set. And of course, you know, do everything they can to get that one Siri node that must be living in Eddie Q's uh, closet that's never updated and gets one twentieth of all my requests and doesn't yeah. doesn't answer them. So anyway, to to answer the 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 query about whether these are new or old, these according to Chance Miller, I missed this yesterday in nine to five. Mac, he said. These, this is series summary from 2017's WWDC. So yeah. it's not, if you ask it about 20, WWDC 2018, you get what I got, which is nothing. So, yeah. So uh, they probably fixed that now, which yeah, is why you're that's getting what, that. That's what happened. They fixed it. Yeah. Oh, never mind. I missed this story. But that's, but, but even when they write these jokes, remember that these aren't just engineers and their downtime adding little quips. No, I imagine to, to they things. have to it, vet them, I, right? I, Again, they, they have no. They they have writers who who just, just like uh, just just like uh, the, the the late night comics have like have monologue writers for them. Uh, Siri has writers for them. Do you think that's a job? Uh, There's like a job. Yes. Writing. Yeah, totally. Absolutely. Writing and part writing and that's, quips and, for Siri. 
Nope, absolutely. Oh, yeah. It's it's part it's part of it's part of making Siri uh, sound a lot more human, uh, so that you'll want to interact with it, interact with it a lot more. I mean, there's a the Google's own voice was uh, synthetic voice was darn good three years ago but there's a reason why they kept working on it to add more inflections to add more context when it needs to tell you something but a human would probably up inflect at the end the reason that when it's, they started programming it to to speak wrong because humans speak wrong which means that you're more inclined to want to talk to your virtual assistant as opposed to just simply setting an egg timer uh, and that's what, oddly enough, that's one of the little subtle things that makes separates a really, really great personal assistant from a very, very good one or a simply adequate one. Oh, my it's God. Funny, 2013, was... Quartz, job description. We're looking for a uniquely creative individual. This is from Apple on the Apple site. To help us evolve and enrich Siri, our virtual personal assistant. Siri's known for, quote, her, quote, wit cultural knowledge and zeal to explain things in engaging, funny, and practical ways. The ideal candidate is someone who combines a love for language, wordplay, and conversation with demonstrated experience in bringing creative content to life within an intense technical environment. So this is... Yep. I, I checked. They filled it. This yep. job is no longer I don't available. Think, I, I bet you there's more than one. <laughs> I bet you're right. You know, the, the, uh, the, 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 uh, one of the fun ones is always like, uh, uh, open the pod bay doors. Is, yeah. It used to get, it used to elicit probably five or six different responses, you know, right. ranging from, uh, you know, that's an insensitive thing to say to a, um, to an intelligent agent to, uh, I can't do that right now to, you know, and, and if you kept on asking her, she would just get more, uh, she, you keep on getting more responses. And so, but my kids love those types of things and they'll sit there and, and, and I think that it's important that you start, they start talking to them and, and I, very subtle things as Andy was talking about, you know, when you call in. If you call into a Hangout and you use the phone uh, connection into the Hangout, the there's something about the Google Voice. It's like you're the first, you, you know, you you've called the right number, but there's no one here yet, and and there's like this confused, like subtle confusion <laughs> that happens. That's funny every. I don't know. For me, it's funny every time I call in. <laughs> it's like it's like, little touches like that do make a difference. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, 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 it's uh, when you do a side by side by side comparison between these voice assistants, it's not just uh, it's not just uh, okay. This one was able to tell us the the the, the year of Don Knotts's third movie and how much money it made in Canada. Okay, that's kind of nice, but really the really something as simple as do I need a jacket today or is it going to rain tonight? Uh, th these three systems, uh, uh, the uh, Shlomo, Alyosha, <laughs> and Guillermo. Uh, they all have a different way of uh, way of responding to you. Guillermo, uh, Google will uh, the Google assistant will say, "Nope, you know you, you won't need a check. It won't. It's not supposed to rain tonight. It's not going. It's going to be cloudy when da 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 dum. But it might rain tomorrow. <laughs> so that's as opposed to the weather. The weather for yeah, Boston, yeah, Massachusetts yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, is oh. moderate with chances of cloudy. I so I this am, is the whole new job category. I would love to be the writer for Siri or Shino. I am thirty percent convinced that Andy Anako programmed in the response for "Can you rap to Siri?" <laughs> Wait a minute, really? Is nope, it a good no, one? Because yeah. I, I don't. Because again, that job list. I found out about that job list listing after it was filled, and nobody, you know, said, "Hey, Andy, by the way, here's a job where you just basically train a uh, train a, a robot how to be a wise ass." A job <laughs> that you've been training for all of your life, I starting think, I think with we get, eighteen years think, as a younger little brother to sisters. I think I think we get Andy Anako, we get Merlin Mann, get a couple other folks and start throwing them the questions that they need to build responses to. And I oh man, and, Merlin uh, Siri would be a trip. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, but, but Andy, Andy and Merlin in two in the same room answering, you know, writing up about five or six answers to something would be uh, be key key to the Let's operation. Let's call Samson. Let's call Samson. Okay, here goes. I wrote this one myself. Apologies in advance to the Sugar Hill Gang. I said a hip hop, save me from the clippy, the peak, peak and pop, and you don't stop. Space rocket to the pong pong a doogie, say up jump the doozy to the rhythm of the. I don't autonomy. think anybody wrote this. This sounds Could random. Could you say that again? <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't say it once. Again, that, this, is, this is this is finer. This is finer points. The finer the the, the finer points of writing something like that would be he can, uh, Siri cannot say that like in a robotic tone. It yeah. has to be. Well, has, I don't think yeah, has Apple has the same. Of, Skills at prosody that Google has shown with the uh, up and all that. They're, they're not down with the streets as no. I are. <laughs> Who? Do, that's the job I want. 
to to uh, to do to to teach it voices and inflections and things like that. That'd be kind of cool. Well, there are, there are several hundred job openings I just checked for uh, Siri engineers, but I didn't find one yeah. for writers. So maybe they've got the team. The team. They already have the team. Uh, let's take a little break. When we come back, uh, I don't know. We'll find something. <laughs> <laughs> There's got to be something. North There's Virginia so campus for Apple. We could talk about that. Apple's, Who's uh, bought new pants recently? Let's talk about yeah, let's the talk fit about and function pants. of our pants. Yes. Uh, tax. We could talk about taxes, tax news. Yawn. Uh, Jason Snell's seven phone features I'd like to see in iOS 12. Why not? It's a, it's a little, it's a little, as Apple always. Pulling, Apple pulling call kit apps out of China. That's probably the biggest story. We'll talk about that. And lots more. <laughs> We're having a contemplative week this week. <laughs> How long is it before uh, we got... We'll be wishing for this at the second <laughs> two, week of Dub Two weeks. Two weeks from yesterday. Uh, our show today... Oh, we got a welcome back Slack. Love Slack. Collaboration hub that lets you organize your team's work in easily searchable channels. So many teams use Slack. I'm sure your team does. If not, why not? Whether you're organizing them along projects... You know, because you want to keep a team working on the project together and in touch or interests or by office or, you know, always what the point is, all the right people are always in the loop. Relevant information. It's all in one place. So the, the history, the search in Slack is phenomenal. New team members can easily get up to speed. It's so much better than email. That's why every big company now is using Slack. They connect the tools and services you need in one place. They just announced, by the way, Slack buttons one so now you can, if you've got, you know, a panoptic alert that's showing up in your Slack, you can respond to it right from within Slack, which is awesome. You can organize your team with real-time messaging and video and voice calls and group file sharing and searchable archives all in one app that looks gorgeous. It's beautiful. Slack saves time, improves productivity. No more switching across multiple tabs and platforms to keep updated with your work. And, of course, it works with all of the tools you need. Jira and Salesforce and Zendesk and Google Drive. More than a 1,000 apps. And is it mobile? Heck, yeah. Mobile apps for iOS and Android that sync seamlessly so you always know what's going on. You're never in a, in a mysterious way. You can pick up where you left off no matter where you are. And your data is absolutely secure. Slack. It's where work happens. Learn more at slack.com. S L A C K dot com. We use it. We love it. Hey, we thank hey Leo, this is this is my oops, hold on. I was gonna show you my what we were look at the Slack. This is my uh yeah. Oh, look channels, at all those groups. Holy camoly. <laughs> See, that's part yeah. of the challenge though, is figuring out uh how to break it down. Right. Well, what we what we do, uh, so we run the whole company on Slack. <laughs> so, um, well, there you and go. Uh, you break up. We basically build private a lot of private channels. We don't have a lot of public channels, and so all those private channels. So one event that we might be doing will be broken up, and there'll be a there'll be an overall channel. There's a producers channel that's only the producers. There's a technical channel for the technical guys. There's oftentimes a stream channel, and so there we build those channels, and then you know some people will share the channels. I see all of them, but uh, but generally keep everybody in the same it, just in the conversations they need and then there's general channels that we build almost everything again and for us because for security reasons is is all uh, uh everybody's in, in only the channels they need to see and then there's general company channels that we put into it that are things we're trying to improve or big projects we're working on um and you get used to it and you know at, at the beginning it was always like why like i don't understand my producers got into it and i didn't like it and I was like, but before you, but then you start using it and you can't uh, live pretty soon. You can't, well, live what, what happens you can't is, like, you is, have yeah. to have it. Then you start sending me short emails and I'd be like, why are you sending no, this in on email? I don't you know, want email. A conversation, <laughs> you know? And so, uh, and it just, your, your email becomes, you know, your internal email becomes non-existent and you just really have it all in there. And it's just so much more sane than, yeah. it, than yeah. it was before. And then you, and you can always, always add external clients, uh, you know, into channels or, or other people that you're working with into single channels or, or multiple channels. And it's just, it is no one's out. No one else has figured it out as well so far. Yeah, I think that someday somebody will write a business school study on how Slack has actually changed how organizations work. I mean, how the, it's really l literally changed how, well, how they're organized. 
it, 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 they just got the right mix. You know, yeah. the, a lot of people, uh, you know, there was Jabber, there was Chatter, there was there, everyone knew. Remember Yammer? Kind of Yammer. Yeah. And, 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 uh, and, and, you know, messages and everything else. And, and there was just, there's some kind of magical mix of, uh, of technologies that came together. They, they, you know, and that's the, the kind of the magic of Twitter or the magic of, of Slack is they had just enough complexity to solve the problems people needed and not too much complexity that it was hard to learn. And, and it just, it, it, you know, there's a lot of people that were trying to, for years trying to, to skin this and they're the first ones that really just got that magic mix right. I wonder how much it has to do with Stuart Butterfield. Cause he of course was, the, the, his story is fascinating. He started a game company which ended up being photo, the photo sharing website Flickr <laughs> and then sold that to Yahoo and then did Slack. And in both cases, I think he has some, some magical touch in the design that makes people just very uh, excited about uh, using it. Did you see, yeah. I think this is very good news, that Oath slash Verizon has sold Flickr to Smug Mug. Yeah. Yep. That's a good idea. Very happy. The McCaskills, uh, Don and Chris McCaskill run, it's kind of like a family business at Smug Mug. Uh, I've used them for years to share my photos. It's kind of, you know, my preferred photo sharing site, but it's not free. And I've always, you know, I've felt like Flickr has been neglected for years yep. and is still, despite the neglect, I mean, you, if like you want to do a Flickr slideshow, you have to use Flash. Like that's, that's like <laughs> right. nobody's looked at this in five years, but uh, it's still the best, one of the best places to get people commenting. And we use Flickr for our tech guy show. So I feel like, I'm thank yep. God, uh, the McCaskills had the good sense to pick it up. I mean, I don't. I, I the reason why I'm still using Flickr for like my long term storage and when I'm posting photos and photo albums that I kind of want people to see is that it's the only service that understands that maybe you want to say more than one sentence about this photo. Yeah. Maybe you yeah. maybe you've got two paragraphs of stuff to say about the aliens who landed on top of the Washington Monument and started teaching cows how to tap dance. Maybe you can't just simply say, whoo, what a day in D.C. today, huh? Question mark. <laughs> it's, you know, and so there, there are times when, uh, I, yes, it it. it it's blogging is kind of one of the many things that Flickr was doing very, very well, but they weren't able to react fast enough when Tumblr gave you a faster way to do a bloggy sort of thing. And they were all set to be Instagram before Instagram figured out that, well, what if we did Flickr, but quick and oh, fast? Oh, I know. You have to feel like that's and, a that's a fumble on Yahoo's part. They they could have done Instagram. Yeah. They? Yeah. Well, so I, I, you know, I'll. Yeah, it could have done something. Every, 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 everyone's a genius with well, access to a time machine. But, right. right. <laughs> but I think, I think it's, that, it's hard you know, for a lot of those, so many. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead, Andy. No, I'm, I was done. Oh, I, I just think that's, you know, I would listen to, there was a, I guess, uh, there was an interview with, that I was listening to, I don't know where I was listening to it, with the Instagram founders. And it was just, it, it's a, uh, it's an amazing uh, you know, process of a lot of these, these unicorns or, or these companies come out of this kind of someone experimenting with something and they just happen to hit the right thing. You know, the founder was saying that he had this idea that people could share it. And his wife said, well, I probably won't use it because I'm not very good at photography. And that's when, you, you know, you should add some, you know, then, then that's when they started adding the filters, which, you know, that is what made Instagram, you know, what it was at the beginning. People feel like they kind of cover back up and forth on this, whether it's just luck, you know, serendipity, or there's some there's some skill involved. The butterfly effect of like a hundred million it's, things. Yeah, it's about it's about hearing the right thing at the right time and being able to hear it. I think that yeah, for a lot of people, some sense, some vision. Yeah. It's because yeah. I I remember the first time uh, Sarah Lane showed me Instagram when it had just launched, and uh, I fell in love with it instantly. Mm -hmm. It was just something about it. I just didn't like the square photos. I was just like, nah. That's because you're I don't the Insta take was for your love, Leo. Yeah. Anyway, I think, I think it's. I Go actually ahead. think it's part of the dis part of the inherent disadvantage of being a large company. You just can't get around it. I mean, uh, I th some of us, I'm sure, uh, in this conversation, I'm sure many of us listening have been in the situation where you're writing a piece of software or service or a tool or a thing for the two people or the three people who really, really need it. And in the ca in my case, it was a friend of mine who really needed a type of app that wasn't being made at all. And maybe for your parents, it's that I, there needs to be a way to make sure the coffee maker is turned off before I leave the house. And when you listen to just one person and every time they come back at you and saying, when, uh, I, I try to make it do this and it didn't work. 
and then you find a way to fix it. Or I got this, I was using it, and I really wanted to do this. Why don't you add this to it? That's the only way that you wind up with something that is unique, that fills a hole that did not exist before. Even when you multiply that by instead of one or two people to 20 or 30,000 people. You have the ability to simply listen to, look at how they're using the thing, make it work that way better, and then listen to people when they tell you what they wish it could do better. You, you know, you, you can't get into featureitis, but that's when you start to realize that here is a hole that existed in software or services that now this is the only thing that will fill it because it's been built to fill that hole specifically. And then at some point, it gets so big, people realize, my God, I always wanted something like Instagram. This is wonderful. And then you get so big that now you can't change it because right. your 8 million users are going to complain because your square button is now a rounded rectangle button. <laughs> and uh, and you can see exactly how usership actually dove down because you added rounded corners. And maybe you're, maybe you're less interested now in figuring out a way to make Flickr work with mobile devices. Actually, believe it or not, Instagram has added two features today yeah <laughs> they finally <laughs> added a mute feature which is instagram is one of those things i guess twitter's like this too where uh sometimes people will just start posting like 20 photos a day all of a sudden and just being able to mute them for a day without unfollowing them that would be nice right just for that period of time and the one i'm really in that's gonna that's not necessarily there on your account yet but once it's active you can just hit the ellipsis on a uh, top right of anybody's post and say mute and then you could say do you want to mute only photo posts or stories or both and then i don't know if it times out but it, the uh, that the theory is you could untime it uh, at, at certain points and then the other thing that they're looking at which i love is after you know i hate it that instagram became algorithmic of course that's the facebook influence it's yep. no longer purely i why is it not purely chronological i don't know but they favor stuff i don't know it's again it's a mystery they think it'll hold you on the screen longer if they yeah. show you things that are more likely it's to appeal annoying. to you annoying but yes. what they are especially when it's like an event and you come to this thing now i'm right here now it's and over. you're seeing it two days that later that was two yeah. days ago yep but now they're going to have a thing uh, or at least they're testing a thing that 40 when you go 48 hours deep it says okay this is 40 you, 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 this is two days later and stop <laughs> you've seen this now <laughs> which i think is a good idea I wish they just go well, back to at least give you a chronological switch. Facebook does that. Is, is, is it as bad as nothing happened anywhere more than 48 hours ago? It's 2018. <laughs> it's over. The news cycle has moved on. Get over it. They also did a weird form of regrams. People were asking for regrams for a long time, so you could just basically retweet the photo. But you can't do that. But now you can take a, a photo someone shared and put it in your story, not on your timeline, but in your story and add a little comment to it. Oh, that's nice. See, that, okay. It's like that's, approximate that's my, that, to what you want. Right. And of course, there's a whole bunch of articles about how to make sure that people can't do that with your <laughs> picture. You know, that, that's what came out right after that. That's yeah. funny. Uh, I said this is this is the point at which I have to go to the public library to where all the, the senior citizens go to learn about how to use the computers. The difference between wait, what what's the difference between my story and my time? I just want to post this to Instagram so people can see this scrambled egg that I had with the spinach in it. Like why? Why it's not a? Is it a story? Am I telling a story? I still don't know what the difference between those two things are. Oh. I don't. I don't know. The, I don't use stories. The story is like a direct response to Snapchat yes. because everybody That's wants the to story. be the star of their own reality <laughs> right. show, and and Snapchat let you be the star of your own reality show. So now Instagram. Has I that. I ask people all the time, do you look at these stories? And everybody says yes. Yep. I don't know why they seem so boring. <laughs> <laughs> I need to fire follow better people. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> the celebrities um, are lit, Leo. The celebrity <laughs> stories are just lit. Are they lit? They're lit. They're lit. I, yeah, I, I can't get enough of that. That's, that's what that's what Instagram means to me. It's like celebrities posting pictures of them, like pushing things against their faces and then putting hashtags. Ooh, my skin has never been more radiant yeah. ever. Thank you, Sony disc man, <laughs> melted disc player. Like, okay, why why are you pushing why are you pushing this chalupa up against your face and not eating it? Yeah. Uh, Apple cracking down on call kit in China. You mentioned this, uh, Renee, and I think it is a, a worthy story. We've talked a little bit about it on some of the other shows. This is, uh, call, first of all, call kit does what? That lets you make video and voice calls in. So, an what app? call kit 
Yeah, so what CallKit does is allow uh, VoIP, voice over IP apps like Skype. It's probably the one people are most familiar with, but a lot of apps have this capability. And it lets them integrate completely with the phone app. So, for example, they can use the phone app interface, the phone app dialer. They'll be listed alongside your phone calls when you go to the recent call section in the phone app. It basically makes the third-party VoIP apps first-party citizens on the iOS phone. So it also has encryption. Yes. And I think that's the reason that the Chinese regulators... Uh, does it does it have encryption or is it is it enable companies that have encryption it, to do it? China is anti-VoIP because VoIP circumvents the communications channels they control and CallKit allowed apps to have the VoIP-like apps be integrated into the phone, which is not something China wants. So WeChat, which is hilarious, had to remove the CallKit functionality and then uh, they demanded that Apple remove any apps that didn't remove it from the App Store. And Apple has complied. Is that because they is that because they can't distinguish a call from regular data? So they can't figure out where, like who you're calling? Um, uh, some you know, call services like are encrypted, some aren't. Like Skype famously had a, a man in the middle option. Uh, it, it depends on the service, but they just didn't want anybody using any service that they didn't have direct access to, apparently. Right. It's I'm a, sure it, our FBI it's a, would like the same thing, to be honest, right? <laughs> yeah, that's what that's what they worries me good. about this. Yeah, they, they, they would really love it, and it really does... Again, I, I've, I, mean, I know I've said this before on the show, but I really wish that Apple pays attention to making it really, really clear what their positions are on all these things that they seem to think are important and all the all the big issues that I'm sure they're going to hit out on, uh, uh, on at WWDC. Like, what would happen if they, they, their 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 fallback line is always, well, we we have a policy of complying with whatever the local rules and regulations are. Does that mean that if China said, oh, by the way, we we basically now we've now decided that every time we confiscate a phone that belongs to somebody, we need to be able to get everything that's on that phone. So you're going to have to give you have to give us a new version of the OS that has a backdoor that we can that uh, government can access so we can basically make sure the encryption is not a problem for us. Would they draw the line there and say, no, I guess you're just not going to be able to uh, buy phones in China? Or are they going to say, yes, sir? Yes, ma'am. Of course, we'll do that. And then that which should send a chill up of the find of anybody in the United States that this is why it's an this is why it's an important issue to make sure we are keeping uh, tabs on what Ch Apple is doing in China because at some point is Apple going to fight the government and say guess what no we're not going to do that and we're going to we are going to let you we're going we're going to die on this hill if we have to because we have decided that we are not going to let uh we're that uh, we we keep saying time and time again that personal privacy and security is really really important we've been using this this book to hammer at Google and Facebook and we hold ourselves to the same standard. So no, we are not going to comply with this law. And we're going to fight. We're going to basically tie it up in legal channels for so long that it will never, never come together until we get you know, lawmakers who have the common sense to strike this down. Or are they going to simply say, we don't want to have to stop selling phones. It turns out that when we said that we believe that this, po this policy is really, really important, we said under most circumstances that don't interfere with our business. So that's why uh, this is not the same situation that's going on in China right now. Again, it's just call kit but it seems as though every time that china has asked them to do a way to, to uh, use apple's power over its platform to make sure that the iphone and the ios platform is never inconvenient for government censors and government uh, government uh, spying they've said sure we can do that no problem and and ironically though not in the u.s where they fought the fbi's request to unencrypt that phone in san well i mean so my my understanding is that the law no, so my understanding is, uh, um, again, Apple has basically, Apple will always obey the rules of the local government. So if they say you can't have porn apps, you know, that the Apple doesn't have them anyway, but if they said that, they'd remove them. You can't have VPN apps. Um, I'm not sure, like, people like to talk about China as the biggest problem. I'm honestly not sure right now because the EU, some countries there like France are incredibly gung-ho about getting access to data. Europe, uh, England has incredibly aggressive laws. One of the reasons that Apple and Microsoft were signatories on the, or, or, or were supporting the Cloud Act was because one of the provisions in the Cloud Act said that governments won't pressure companies to put backdoors into um, their software, which is one of Apple's primary concerns. It's worried about that with the US government, with the French government, with the Chinese government. So I, I think it's it's good not, like I think it's all this is all good stuff to talk about. I think it's really important that we don't also just focus on China because there's so many countries doing so many scary things with so much of our privacy. Uh, but I think that that is an interesting point. And I think Apple has said in the US, they draw the line at modifying their software. They'll do the things, that, you know, they'll take things out of the app store if they have to, but they won't modify their software. And whether it's France or China or the US, one of those countries is going to ask them seriously, legally, uh, with legislation 
to do it first, then we're going to have to see what happens. Yeah, the reason they could say no in the U.S. is there was no, they weren't compelled to. There was no law. Yeah, they were just asking yeah. for it. And that, and that is an excellent point. A lot of these, uh, the EU has in many ways is so far beyond what the United States is doing in terms of ensuring that citizens of the Internet have rights to their data and rights to their privacy and rights to how they are abused by the Internet. On the other hand, a lot of that is a very, very much a lot more hands on uh, as far as the what the government can tell a company to do or tell uh, what a private individual can do, which I'm not quite so uh, quite so happy about. Uh, China is and it, it keeps coming up because I think that they're sort of the canary in the coal mine. That's what if uh, the China could happen in the United States if we have just three, just two presidential administrations that are under the Putin under the Putin mold, let's say, as opposed to the George Washington mold. And so this is the sort of stuff that we're might be fighting about. And if you think that it can't happen here, think about all the things that are happening today that you thought could never happen in the United States. Yeah. So uh, but I also I mean I'm sympathetic with any company because you don't have a lot of choice. You either ad adhere to the laws of the country or you withdraw from that market. Which is what Google did. Yeah, which, to Google's credit, although Google uh, was able to, because it was a services company, maintain a lot of its services overseas for Chinese citizens, they weren't selling phones in China exactly. Yeah. Uh, on the other hand, I mean, China is the first really big nation to start saying we want this. I mean, the, the reason you can say you could say no to France without a huge economic uh, downside, but saying no to China. Is saying no to a billion well, consumers. Famously, That's hard. famously, BlackBerry had to install Squid servers, and right. several uh, Southeast Asian companies said they could monitor BBM right. traffic. It's something that keeps coming up. Apple has said repeatedly, and they've been consistent that they like their doctrine is to engage. They believe that by pulling out, they're no longer part of the process and can't help affect change. And that works until it doesn't. But so that far, reminds me of my generation. We said, <laughs> when we finally gave but, up uh, protesting the war, we said, "Oh, I'm going to I'm going to help change from within," which is yeah. basically just yeah. I give up. Well, but well, the, the one thing, the one and, thing also, is that Apple, and also just go ahead, I, I go ahead uh, Alex. Hold on a second. Go ahead, okay. Alex. All I can say is that the, the one thing to remember, though, is that, that all these things are software solutions. If you know, if uh, if China really put the the beat down on, and Apple decided it didn't want to, uh, you know, do it, you know, there would be a flip of a switch or a, a, you know a few bits to um, allow all those phones to close close up. You know, so you know, I think that China is not. Uh, necessarily ready to do that either i i don't think i think that they're they're not ready to pull that trigger as much as apple's not ready to pull that trigger go ahead andy uh, I was just going to say that, 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 that uh, again, another good point by, uh, by Renee, a lot of human rights organizations say that it really doesn't have to be an all or nothing proposition that a company like Google, a company like Apple, a company like Facebook can help the people of uh, people who are being abused by a government by at least having some sort of presence I inside that company so that at least some of their technology will be available to these people. Uh, my, my concern is that at some point, Again, where is the line that they refuse to <laughs> they refuse to cross? It's, at right. some point, they're going to say, "You've been doing such a good job of building this and building that for us. We now want you to start building tanks for us." Right. At one point, at what point do the, does does GM say, "You know what? We really don't want to make tanks for your army right, right now." And for that reason, if it means we cannot be a business in your country, that means we can't be a business in your country. Or do you say, "Sure"? <laughs> Well, I know well, and I think, nobody's trying to build smartphones for North Korea. Well, people were so quitting Google markets. over the military contract, so it happens within companies as well as with the company. Yeah. And it's then there's, all layers and there's also negotiations, and, and the United States has leverage with China over tariffs. So it's a, it's a, you know, it's a complicated issue. It's not Apple fighting on its own. Well, and it also seems that Apple has, has the, the line that Apple's drawn so far is, is not to get access to the phone. You know that's been right. the. Let's you know, hope like you they can't get that actual, line. Well, that's just, the problem is is that they they don't give up China if they if they do that they give up the ability to do that everywhere. So you know the United States you know the FBI would pounce on any if Apple let down its guard and actually let allowed access to the phones by by any any other government the FBI would would be on that immediately right. trying to force them to do it. They and it would look very they, bad if they said, oh look, Ch Apple will do it for China, but they won't do it for exactly. our own country to protect like, our own country. That would yeah, look that very would be, bad. Be disastrous. Yeah. So I, I, I think that Apple would have to fight that vigorously and probably not back down because it's their business model. I mean, they, they've, they've bet so much on privacy that that's their, I think it's good. I think that that's been a huge advantage, especially lately. Uh, I think that it does mean that they, they can't back down. 
I'm sure they're praying that it doesn't come to that. I mean, one of the issues that they apparently had to navigate when they did the cloud, or they did, sorry, the, the data retention in China, because many companies just want, they no longer want the data of their citizens to be held outside the country. And in some senses, that's that's sinister because it means they have greater access to it. But in other, in other ways, you can see their point, like they don't want French data stored on U.S. servers where the U.S. government has access to it. But one of the things that Apple... I think was thinking about was it's not just security. Like we all think about security, but as uh, you know, Dave Nanian pointed out to me that I'd never considered that a lot of people retention is the most important thing, not security. They don't care if someone steals their baby photos, but if those baby photos are lost, their lives are over. And there's a whole bunch of backup services that are attached to a lot of these devices that Apple sold along with these devices that just let you keep your data, not even secure data. They just let you keep your data up to date or on devices or, or sync to your computer. And if you pull out, you remove all those services from everybody who has those devices. So it's always it's always a very big balancing act. We are interest in interesting times. There's Amazon, who's apparently trying to sell its face recognition technology to law enforcement in the United States. They say, uh, "Oh, we really, we're really good at this, and, uh, and uh, if you if you want face recognition, we could help you out." Orlando Police Department has bought it. So has the Washington County Sheriff's Office in Oregon. And uh, now the ACLU is, uh, today, the ACLU says uh, they've stopped selling this image recognition system. It's called recognition with a K in a very kind of dystopian spelling to law enforcement. Ron Skafka would very cool. much approve. Skafka would approve. Uh, Are they going to charge the post office double if things change? <laughs> what a world we live in. I, you know, it's just, I don't, it's, uh, but this is, I mean, this is just the beginning. It's, there's going to be, we, we talk a lot about this these days. Uh, we've got biotech CRISPR coming along so fast. We're going to have some major yeah. ethical crises uh, ahead and dilemmas. Um, we've got surveillance right. dilemmas, privacy dilemmas, uh, technology is racing far ahead of our ability to kind of figure out what to do with it. I know. I think I think that the, the future of these conversations, I mean, what we're going to be really talking about is not what can we do, it's whether we should. You know, and, and, and the is ethics it of it, the right? morality. We're going to have yes. to make, but we're going to have to make those decisions on so many levels, whether it's, it's do we get surveillance? Do we use that surveillance? Do we use people's DNA through their re relatives to find someone who, a perpetrator? Do we, um, but also, uh, do we allow someone to die? I mean, you know, at, at some point, we're going to be able to keep people alive forever, right. you know, like no matter right. what happened to them. And the question is, is that is that appropriate? We're now getting past we, we we're getting past. We could do everything we could do. I mean, we because we, what we, everything we can do is probably more, yeah, more too much more than we should. Yeah. And so and so we're going to have to on so many levels uh, in the next 50 years have to make decisions about what we're going to what we're willing to do. Yeah. And that's a entirely well, different and more complicated I, conversation. I think, the, I think the real issue is it's going to come down to how much money do you have? And the, yeah. so there's already a gap between the, the haves and the have-nots. But imagine now if, uh, I mean, there have been a few movies about this, haven't there? Uh, you mm -hmm. know, the people who have the money can have smarter children, better-looking children, and then, uh, you know, perpetuate their uh, their. Uh, <laughs> well, life I'm already, I'm already noticing the, the, the relevance of, you know, so like Washington Post and New York Times have, have started to put about paywalls. I don't, I don't really care their, about their their news enough to to pay for it. So I, but I've noticed that now they don't seem relevant to me because I don't. Right. You know, people people post those things on on uh, Facebook and you hit it the first couple of times, and then after that you say, oh, it's a it's a Washington Post thing. I'm not going to bother because I'm I'm going to hit some paywall. And and now you're ending up with a, a group of people that are going to get a, one set of news. And it's then frankly why I've chosen. I always from the beginning chose an ad model as opposed to a, mm -hmm. a paid model. It's more democratic. It it's more open. It gets the. I, I think it's important to get the information out. And anybody, mm -hmm. it shouldn't be a, it shouldn't be, your access to, to information should not be limited by your access to money. At least to a, at well, a certain but, point. Yeah. But, but, but back to, back to this, I mean, I'm, it's one of the things that kind of scares me about future applications of technology is when tech like this becomes really, really inexpensive. Uh, like the, uh, the New York Times piece was saying that, uh, uh, the test beds, the, the, the test sites for it were sp only spending a few hundred bucks to set it up. And then like AWS, which only cost, was only costing them maybe like five bucks a month to actually run it. And at that point, you get into the you get into the realm of, well, if it's that cheap, why wouldn't we put this in? Just like uh, 20 years ago, 
if it were re if the if the local if local law enforcement had a really really important reason to keep an eye on this road that runs parallel to I-95 because they think there's been like a a string of home burglaries and the burglars have been using this road that means they would make the case for themselves and for the courts that it's, it's important enough for us to actually park a cruiser, an unmarked cruiser with some people in it and cameras to actually record who's going this way and that, uh, and then to analyze it and then figure out what to do with it. Well, and, and but but in the in a in a in a in a world in which you can simply buy, imagine you can just uh, put put together like a thirty dollar Raspberry Pi, add a hundred bucks worth of hardware on it, just send someone out there to recharge the battery about every two or three days. And you're simply collecting every single license plate that comes by, or you're collecting every single face that comes through uh, that comes through the the the, the, the food court of a mall. Uh, and the the ad, the additional problem with that is that now all that information is in a database somewhere, and it's owned by just. So there's the owner of a dry cleaners. And if a police officer comes to a detective comes to that place and say, we're very, very interested in just the seeds in the in the spreadsheet, the Google spreadsheet file of all the people that were recognized by your face ID system over the past month. Are they going to say no? Probably not. So this is where hell on earth well, starts and, to come. And we don't know exactly when the portal to hell was opened. Well, and and the thing is, is that it's it's going to be to get back to the complicated questions that are going to happen. You know, what's what's coming, uh, which is already available to some folks, is. But if you think about the sc a school, a school security, uh, imagine cameras that are looking outward to every uh, entrance to that that school. Every person that does those cameras can see, it looks and identifies who they are. It looks back at all of their social postings. It looks back at everything that, they, that they've that they done publicly and makes a decision about whether someone should go up and talk to them be, before they even get to the school entrance. And and that is, given what's just happened, um, that that's going to be great. really hard. <laughs> well, it does sound that's hard great, to say is, no to, isn't it? Exactly. And, and it gets to a point where that kind of, you know, that kind of solution, this is what Amazon is going to sell towards is you know, well, sure it's the, ironically is, in this and, article the new york times said oh and by the way we used that same technology during the royal wedding to identify guests so right. yep. it's being used in a variety of ways not all bad the uh, the spokesperson for amazon said amusement parks had used it to find lost children uh i mean it's not you're right it's not all bad uh, well, you know, i i was talking to somebody I, I was talking to somebody about about disney and uh you know disney world uh I, I, I was because I, I always said I don't like to go to Disney World because I uh, it was a former someone who used to work there and and I said I don't like to go to Disney World because I'm always afraid I'm going to lose my kids and they they said oh this there's nothing there's no place in the world that is safer to lose your harder kids to lose Disney your World. kids than Disney he World said, yeah. he said because uh, they <laughs> you know they're basically unless you're going to the bathrooms uh, you're pretty much under camera you right. know and uh, right. and they can find out the kid and then they just rewind back to where you were with the adult and then they go forward to where the adult is and they go wow. find them and bring them over wow. and i said well how often do you have to do that and they're like oh 150 times a day jeez louise you know, like, you know, yeah i mean you know but you know and 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 for disney is a good example there's you know there's facial recognition as you walk into right uh, the world looking for predators yeah we used and, to we used to get upset because they uh, the, the disney pass asked for your fingerprint they don't need your fingerprint yeah. anymore <laughs> That's right, so no. old school. <laughs> but for but for them, there's a there's a billion dollar problem, multi billion dollar problem. One kid, mm -hmm. you know, is is abducted no, you can't let from, a predator in. from That's Disney right. World, and it yep. ruins the whole company. Yep. You know, it ruins that that whole thing. And and yep. so they they spend a lot of money on making sure that that you're very safe at that location. You know, and and I think that the hard part is it, it gets back to what Andy's saying is completely valid. That we get to a point where this is too far. The problem is you end up with in a world where we think that we can fix everything, that every time something goes wrong or something horrible happens, that there should be, there should have been a technology to fix it or there should be a law to fix it. We're going to get into a position where you have parents that, you know, that are going to say, you know, we're going to sue the school if it doesn't put in security that makes sure that our kids are, you know, taken care of. Um, and, and then so, you, so that technology starts going out. And once you did it there, why don't you do it everywhere? And then you end up in a situation where everybody's tracked all the time. And that's a probable outcome. <laughs> you should also <laughs> so, point out that you mentioned the, the the resignations at Google. The technology that 300 people quit Google uh, over was face recognition technology for yeah. drones that Google was working on for the military. And people were upset because it, even though Google said, well, it's only for defensive use, people said, nah, it's going to be used offensively as well. So there, so yeah. every, but this is always the case with technology, right? It's a, it, it technology is neutral. It's a tool, it's, it's a tool and it's how it's used. That, and that's why I think yeah. it's. I think I'm glad to have seen uh, at the Build conference, uh, Microsoft CEO Satya Nadella 
bring up ethics. Google yes. mentioned it for a few or a sentence or two. But, and I think Tim Cook's very much focused on this. It's up to technologists to consider the uses of their technologies and try to make it point it towards the good, not the bad. Well, I don't know if it's up to te technologists. I think it's going to be up to f philosophers. Well, everybody. <laughs> you know, but and, technologists, and, and, you can't, you know, you know rob it up. Uh, you can't keep technologists out of the loop because when no, they're, no, absolutely. But I, they're, they're developing this stuff, they are the first line of defense against bad uses. No, I, I, mm -hmm. I agree. And I think that, but I also think that, you know, we, this is why a civilian generally run, you know, is the secretary of defense that, that is making, you know, and a civilian That's is right. running those things That's right. is because, because we have to make those decisions because, you know, the military doing what the military thinks is right all the time may not be the right decision, right. you know, um, cause they're so going to everybody has to be involved. You're exactly, yes, yeah, everybody I agree. has to be involved in that conversation. I agree. Yeah. hundred percent. And it's going to be complicated and we're going to make a lot of the wrong decisions. I mean, I think that, no, I mean, when I was a kid, um, they wanted to put the, the local stream in a pipe just so that nobody could ever drown in it. And then people had to point out that that would destroy the entire forest ecology <laughs> and they backed down to it. But that was their first instinct was, well, if you we put it in a pipe, no one will ever have problems with it. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, I just I, I don't think that legislation uh, solves <laughs> solves every problem. Uh, and certainly in, every, in, in everything, there is danger in excess. I just think that there is, should be a happy medium between too much legislation that stifles a technology and doesn't allow it to find its own place in society. And let's just do absolutely nothing and have absolutely no protections for private citizens and hope it all works out okay. Because yeah. it really doesn't. That's how people. There, there, there are a lot of a lot more people died in coal mines before they said, you know what, this whole thing about letting employers, a coal company, a coal mining companies, just do whatever the hell they want to their to their employees. That's not working out to the tune of thirty children every week. What if we had some, I don't know, some rules that they had to follow uh, if they're going to be in this business? And that's. Uh, and that that's where we are right now uh, with uh, with AI, with a lot of this new te uh, surveillance technology, uh, starting with a basic statement of rights. What are what are my rights? Uh, so much of what defines uh, freedom in America comes from, for whatever silly reason, in the late in the late 18th century, it was general agreement that the that the that you can say whatever the hell you want and nobody can sue you for simply having said something within you know libel whatever slander but there the first amendment that was important enough that it's part of the fabric of the united states the second amendment for good or bad is part of the fabric of the united states the ability to uh, not rec not uh, be forced to incriminate yourself Again, all this stuff that it's not stuff that uh, that God or evolution programmed into our DNA. It's something that at some point a group of people for the power to create laws decided to write that down because it was important enough. And that basically uh, that's how the First Amendment became one of these uh, third rails that you have a very, very hard time, uh, t t hard time cracking. So we don't uh, right now we've got a whole bunch of new freedoms that have we're not even a twinkle in anybody's eye, even 20 years ago, let alone uh, 200 years ago. And it's um, it's in interesting to think about how we think that a lot of this stuff is so malleable simply because we didn't grow up and our grandparents didn't grow up and our great grandparents didn't grow up with a, with a, an amendment to the Constitution guaranteeing us this right as part of the inst installation package of American democracy. Well, and I think that one of the challenges that we have, if we look at the line of questioning that, that Mark Zuckerberg got uh, when he was in Congress, was that we have a lot of people writing laws that don't really have any grasp of the technology that they're writing laws about. <laughs> so so the, thing, the, the, the things that we're talking about that we're worried about, I mean, I think most of them have trouble checking their email. You know, so, so I think that, that well, that's, a, that's a big, big challenge as we start to think about what the policies and regulations should be. You have a lot of people that are running uh, the show that, that don't understand what those what those technologies do or or what the pluses or minuses are well we can yeah. fix that there's an election coming up let me uh, let's take a break because i i want to show you i want to cheer things up with a new yeah. uh, an emoji single from apple the south korean group hyoko are you familiar with, i'm sure i bet renee ritchie knows hyoko anyway we'll we'll watch a uh, an emoji music spot in just a moment. I stopped, I stopped following them when, when Dave left the group. I know. You I, thought, know. I thought Dave was the, the musical authority, the, the integrity of that group. <laughs> well, they replaced him with Harry McCracken, so everything is good. <laughs> yeah, you know what? Harry really ought to be getting royalties for these things. I don't understand how he's not. <laughs> Our show today brought to you by Rocket Mortgage. If it's time to buy a new home or it's time to refi your existing home, you've got to know about Quicken Loans, the number one lender in the country, country, number one in volume, but also number one in customer satisfaction. 
eight years running, eight years in a row, thanks to, according to J.D. Power, they realized uh, some time ago, Quicken Loans did, that the mortgage experience wasn't keeping up with the times, that it was stuck, dated, stuck in the uh, 19th century. They needed a technological revolution, and they came up with Rocket Mortgage, and hallelujah, no more going to a bank, no more long applications, no more faxing information, and no more time spent in the attic going through paperwork. Nope. It's easy. It's fast. You can do the entire thing on your phone in a matter of minutes. And it'll give you the confidence you need when it comes to buying a home. This is the biggest purchase you'll make in your whole life. And you, it should be simple. It should be transparent. It should be easy. And you should understand every step of the way. And that's what Rocket Mortgage does. You'll understand everything that's going on. You'll be confident you're getting the right mortgage for you. You don't have to go to the attic to go through paperwork because their trusted partners allow you to share your financial information with Rocket Mortgage at the touch of a button. And this all happens not only online, but fast. So fast you could do it at an open house and and before you leave tell the realtor, "Hey, we're approved for the uh, we're we're approved for the loan." Rocket Mortgage by Quicken Loans apply simply, understand fully and mortgage confidently. Get get started at rocketmortgage.com/macbreak. rocketmortgage.com/macbreak. Equal housing lender licensed in all 50 states at MLSConsumerAccess.org number 3030. RocketMortgage.com slash MacBreak. All right. So this is a uh, single called Citizen Kane from a Korean group that I'm probably not pronouncing properly, so I won't. And I guess Apple produced this using the Animoji technique. Boom, boom, taxi driver. That's actually pretty catchy. <laughs> you know how much they spend making music videos? It's millions of dollars. This would be so much easier. All the music videos should be this way. I'm suddenly thinking about how much time Apple spent debating how pointy the teeth of the bear are. You know, I'm looking at the bear teeth. They're kind of scary. They're a little pointy. So are the dragons. But the chicken has no teeth, as we all know. Beak is pointy, though. <laughs> and, you know, that bear looks angry. They also they also have the, the dark shark-like eyes of a killer. <laughs> I want them to sing The Greatest Showman. This is not... Yes. <laughs> yes. This is not the first Animoji uh, musical uh, video Apple's done. They did it for Migos, Childish Gambino, Royal Blood... And now Hyoko. That's got to hurt This is Samsung. America one. It's yeah. a little bit violent, so don't get into that, kids. Yeah, I don't <laughs> think there's there's no Animoji in This is America, is there? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> that would be too creepy. Yes. yes. Spe speaking of a company listening to, following the lead of its users, like uh, what, how far away are we from having that as a feature in iMovie? Like to add narration that is simply an Animoji. Oh, it should just be so simple, right? The rumor, the rumor is it's coming to FaceTime at least this uh, this June. Right, that's easy. Oh God! But I think it should be an iMovie. Everybody should be able to do this. Yes. Without all the effort that Harry McCracken and Renee Ritchie put in, it is hard, isn't uh, it, Renee? That's a lot of work. Rambo from uh, Nine to Five Mac. He made an Animoji Studio. Yeah. Oh, there's an anim Animoji Studio. Well, not from Apple. From Guy Rambo. It's a, it's a third party app that lets you do a bunch of. Oh, you've got an article about it right here. Animoji Studio. Ah. So this does all the work that you would normally do to edit, you know, capture it and edit it and all that. Yeah. Ah. Nice job, Guillermo. Guillermo. <laughs> Guillermo Rambo. Yeah, this, is, this, is, this is by far my favorite type of programming. Like not, yes. I, I'm, I'm impressed by servers. I'm, I'm impressed by the, infra the digital infrastructure that keeps day-to-day -day life and emergency services running. Nothing I love more, however, than someone had a really wonderful, silly idea that just had to be implemented by them. Yeah. And yeah. <laughs> Spectre's back. I'm sure we'll be talking a lot more about it uh, this afternoon on Security Now, right after this show. Google and Microsoft have disclosed. We knew that there was something out there, but they have now talked a little more about it. 
a CPU flaw, the, the fix of which can slow your machine down by several percentage points, 2 to 8%, according to SysMark and the spec integer benchmarks. Um, I, you know, all of the talk in this article is about Windows, but these same Intel chips with speculative execution are running on, um, on Macs, so I don't know. And that's uh, the horrible thing about uh, Meltdown Inspector is that they were never patched. All we did was mitigate the known vulnerabilities, right. and that just means that when someone finds another vulnerability, you're going to have to go back and mitigate that as well, yep. Yep. and then rinse and repeat forever until the chips change, if they get the chip changes right. And it sounds like Intel is going to have to re-architect the chip changes too. So, so here's the good yeah. news. This we, new uh, uh, flaw is called Speculative Store Bypass yeah. Variant 4. Safari has been patched. Uh, for it. Intel says the meltdown mitigations uh, from earlier this year are applicable to variant 4. So if you're using Safari, Edge, or Chrome, you're, you're okay. Um, but there are also more Spectre-like flaws that will require firmware updates and CPUs. Intel has, according to this article in The Verge, already delivered microcode updates to OEMs, which means they'll I if guess. they're good. I mean, the first time they did that, they weren't right. very good. So. Yeah, you uh, test those before you push them. The browser stuff is, is good because that, those were the most likely vectors for attacking these exploits. So if you stop them from, in the browser, right. then you stop. But I mean, like, it doesn't fix the exploits. Until right. It just makes it harder to take right. advantage of. Yeah, exactly. It, this is an interesting choice. Uh, the firmware updates will set the speculative store bypass protection to off by default. Yes, so really all it's going to do is let you turn it on if you're worried about security more than you are about performance. And I'm sure yeah, no good I hope Apple will stuff. come up with something better than that. Like <laughs> like ARM CPUs on Macs. Like ARM. <laughs> ARM. Uh, according to, uh, again, The Verge, Intel future processors, Cascade Lake will include new built-in hardware protections. See, every time, every time I fall asleep, there's a new lake. I wake up and there's, there's like too many whiskey lakes. lake and Cascade Lake. Mm -hmm. and I like whiskey lake. That's the lake I want to visit. Talk, 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 <laughs> talk, 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 yeah, but it, before it was, you know, shrink the die and then you fix the architecture, then shrink the die, fix the architecture. Now it's shrink the die, fix the architecture, optimize, 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 optimize. Right. And sometimes those optimizations well, see, this aren't is, the this, best. Uh, one, of the, one of the most one of the most mind changing conversations I ever had with like an engineer was the first time I really got into in depth conversation with the with the with the CPU designer and the, like the first when I, when I'm I, I was hoping he would like explain to me like what the, basically what the what the job is and like what the strategies are and and he's like you don't understand. We, we, we are now at the point where we're butting our heads against the speed and the size of an electron. Like mm -hmm. if, if, this, if we could get electrons that were smaller, we'd be in, we'd be in business. If we get electrons that move faster, I could actually see my kids grow up. But no, we're stuck with these electrons. And <laughs> like and I, I just sort of had to lean back. I think when you're, when, when your big engineering problems is that you wish there was something smaller and faster than an electron, that's a job I don't want to have. Here's some really good news. For a long time, if you wanted to use hardware authenticators with uh, iPhones, you had to use Bluetooth. You couldn't use the NFC chip because Apple didn't let other uh, apps get access to it. They, of course, uh, have a new NFC kit, and uh, they've opened this up to third-party developers in iOS 11. And for the first time, you can use a NFC-based YubiKey. I have this. is called the YubiKey Neo which does work on Android phones using its NFC, but now you can use it with LastPass on iPhone. I, iPhone 7 or later with an NFC chip. LastPass is the first uh, app. By the way, LastPass is a sponsor. LastPass is the first app to support that, but others pre uh, presumably will uh, will follow. So that's good because yeah. it's a real, this is a really good way to do two fact, second factor. It's not a six-digit code. It's a, it's a physical okay. hardware dongle. I really want an NFC ring. I guess there is one. I've never used it. I don't know if it's... There is one. I used it and it never worked right. Oh, well, there you go. Uh, it just seems like having story? a ring on your hand that, you, that is just like it's it's on your hand. You know, so I for, know. For this YubiKey... So you, there's a lot of different YubiKeys. Uh, most of Mac is a USB device. And uh, 
Uh, I use a YubiKey for a lot of my you know most secure stuff. The Neo, which is one of, it's an, actually an older form factor YubiKey, has NFC. And so you can use it with a uh, with an Android phone. And now you can use it with an iPhone with uh, LastPass. That's one of the things I use a YubiKey with. So that's that's very good news. It's a good it's a better way to authenticate. Hey, Alex, the, I, I, got, I, I got something I got something I'm willing to sell you real cheap. Uh, it is my my Java ring. <laughs> <laughs> is that your Legion was, flight ring, Andy? It well, ki kind of. It's uh, it was made for a JavaScript conference, uh, a Java conference in like the 90s, like 2000, something that. like that. Yeah, it is a complete that button on the top. There is a complete <laughs> like computer with I.O. clock storage and encryption. As a matter of fact, on the side, it says actually says digital decoder ring wow. because writing stuff onto it is actually encrypted and everything. And that was one of the things they're trying to get this technology, <laughs> get developers interested in this technology. So you would wear fashionable rings like this or you'd have the button on a key fob and then you just like tap on a door to have it let you in or you tap on a coffee that. machine or a Coke machine to sell you, sell you a Coke. And I have never wanted a technology more than this. But like we have NFC, it should be able to work, but no one can agree on the best way to make this really happen. So is that uh, NFC based or RFID based? Or no, no, it, it's way, way before. It's actually one wire. It, it requires physical contact. Uh, it's you know, it's conductive metal, of course. And actually, what would work, what would happen is that uh, when you tap it against the thing, the actual metal against metal would create like a one a one channel one bit. Uh, uh, data lines uh, for serial data. So they would just do all the negotiation uh, in half duplex mode. Uh, and it, the, one of the demos they had is that when you filled out your your uh, your form to uh, to register for the conference, it asked you like what how you take your coffee. And so they had the coffee machine set up at your ring when you checked in set up. So you had like ten bucks worth of coffee money on it. And every time you tapped on the coffee coffee machine, it read from your ring. Oh, he takes it uh, two sugars, one cream. Uh, he wants the whatever fair trade, whatever. You, I don't I don't drink coffee, so I'm in over my head for that. Uh, and then it would prepare the coffee the way you like it and deduct like two bucks from the ring. So that's clever. I wish it's it clever. Would, I mean, right, it's also it. a pretty boss ring. So, yeah, you should save it. That's it a piece it of tricks people into history. thinking I graduated from high school. Yeah. <laughs> my, one of my favorite computers. <laughs> that is that is your smallest, probably smallest computer. Uh, I guess you, Leo, did you see the story about the uh, we were talking about two-factor reminding me that story about TeenSafe? Yeah, isn't that shocking? We were talking about that they, on iOS today. This is an app that uh, was used to what for to protect your teens somehow. It was a way to monitor your children's activity and the iOS version. In order for it to be more convenient, what it had you do was uh, give turn them off. your child's iTels credentials <laughs> and by and turn off two-factor so that they could pull the backup from the kid's iPhone oh. and then give it to you in a Windows app. Oh. Well, and then of course they were breached. They've been <laughs> breached, and not only have they been breached, but they have leaked iCloud credentials of many teenagers. Oh, that's a <laughs> nightmare. And you think about, I mean, that's actually horrific because these are children, and now you basically give them the "find my iPhone" password for those children. Oh, terrible. Yeah. Um, I don't know how many people use TeenSafe. Uh, ZDNet says that thousands of user passwords were leaked. Um, they stored it in plain text on an Amazon yep. web server. <laughs> <sighs> yeah, see, I'm an idiot, and even I wouldn't design a piece of software like that. Yeah. It's like there's 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 some people who see like a a, a skillet on a pan, a, a skillet on a stove, and they think the only way for me to figure out if that's so hot that I shouldn't touch it is for me to put it my face right against it. <laughs> but most people say. I instinctively believe that this is the wrong way to go about something. Uh, TeenSafe has pulled both servers offline after ZDNet alerted them. Good for them. Yes, we've taken the, action, the, and we're alerting customers that could be impacted, says TeenSafe. The website was amazing, though. It says, TeenSafe Desktop is a new applet designed to reduce the occurrences of frequent iCloud account lockouts experienced by many parents. It uses your home's <laughs> local network to download your child's Apple iCloud backup data to your computer and then upload it to TeenSafe servers. The TeenSafe Desktop app runs in the background on your Mac or Windows PC and is called anytime you log into your TeenSafe account and click Get Latest Data to, on, to onboard a new device. So if you've used TeenSafe, the smartest thing to do would be to immediately change your iCloud passwords. And yes. guess what? Turn two-factor back on. Yes. <laughs> and then <laughs> burn, the, burn the TeenSafe and salt it. Yeah. yeah. Salt it. Salt and hash it. 
Apple has put uh, $1.76 billion into escrow as they begin to fight over the tax bill from Ireland. The uh, Irish government uh, is asking for 13 billion euros in disputed taxes. Well, Ireland didn't clearly, want to do it. The EC yeah, made them do it, right? Yeah. Uh, both Ireland, uh, Dublin, and Apple are appealing the ruling. But but I, I, I like the idea of you can appeal, but guess what? If we judge $13 billion against you, you're going to have to put that money aside Right. You know, so that if you if you lose, you're you're still out. You, we still get the float on thirteen billion dollars, and if you lose, you're not going to be able to weasel out of paying because we already got the the dough. Yeah, that's yeah. that's a good move. Uh, I just think I think it's just I such an amazing European thing for countries to be willing to let somebody else tell them what they can and can't tax. I just but it's, they, it's I mean just this, the scary thing is we have this issue um, with this issue in Canada now where some of the laws were written so sloppily that there are a bunch of private Canadian citizens who now owe the U.S. government millions of dollars because they had an American parent and the law is written so that it doesn't distinguish between corporate income and personal income and the IRS is holding these Canadians who've never lived in America liable for oh. millions of dollars in corporate profits oh. personally. It has to be paid back ASAP. It's like people are like $9 million. Well, I kind of understand the EU's point of view. They're, they Basically what they, you know, if you join the EU, the idea is we're all in this together. They don't want any member state of the EU to compete with other states by charging ridiculously low taxes. A race to the bottom. The right. Tax, I, yeah. think, I think that I don't have a problem with saying, okay, in the future you, can, you can't do this or whatever. It's the... We're going to claw back for years into something that was, well, you know, that's not something that was hidden, you know. And, no, but and they it, said that it, they were violating the law all along, and so that's why they're yeah. clawing it back. I'm not sure I disagree with that, but uh, you're right. It's a little, it's like to get a $13 billion tax bill years later is <laughs> <laughs> certainly a shock. It's not like it was, but it's not like it was being hidden under something. It was a bunch of agreements that were all there. Right. And, and so decide, decide, okay, this is what, you know, they've now started to pay attention to it. So they're now saying, okay, you know, it's, it's, it's an, a, an agreement that was, I think, entered into it fairly uh, straightforward. It's not like someone hid something in a Swiss bank account or in the Cayman Islands. You know, they, they, you know, this is an agreement that was between governments uh, and, and corporations. And, and again, saying, hey, we don't agree with this. We think that, you know, as a group, we can't do that in the future. It totally makes sense to me. The, the part of going clawing back is the part that I'm just like, okay. Well, there's you know also I mean? the flip side where it's just the U.S. and Eutry out of all the countries in the world that charge taxes for money earned outside the, com the country. It's like, it's like the rest of the world is metric. We're imperial. The rest of the world taxes you on location. We're going to tax you no matter where you are or operate. Right. So it's it's right. it's different environment. Yeah. Uh, Apple thinking about, according to ZDNet, a new campus in North Carolina. The Research Triangle, Cary, North Carolina. This is actually according to WRAL, which is a local news channel uh, there. Um, so we knew Apple was going to build a new campus. We just didn't know where. I don't. Right? And it's not a P Apple Park or an Infinite Loop. It's a tech. It's, it, at least at first, it's going to be a tech support campus. So right. it's nothing to get to. Right. You know. Right. Although it's a lot of jobs for that uh, that area. And totally, you can, Apple has you can tons of these they, buildings all over the U.S. They gave them tax breaks. <laughs> you can you can be pretty much <laughs> yeah. sure that but, there were but, tax but breaks still involved. Not not nothing compared to what Amazon is demanding. So that's I'm uh, I, I'm getting. <laughs> you will exactly. pay us to be demanding. there. <laughs> yeah. Um. Let's see. Well, when I, I, you know, when it comes to taxes, I mean, you know, like we're talking about Cupertino now, talk, thinking about doing the head tax, um, which is, yeah. I think. Makes sense. I mean, there's, a, there's. A, I don't think that it really costs these these companies that much money. I think that the, for 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 an Apple or for Amazon in Seattle, this is like a, a, a small item. But what it does do, I think, is has a lot of companies that are thinking about building in that community, thinking, well, if I'm going to expand, if I think I'm going to go bigger. I don't know if I really want to be here to do that. What, I don't think well, that the how do they tax them? If they okay, so they're not taxing them by the number of employees now. What do they tax them by the the acreage? They're not. They're not. They're I mean, not, they're, you know, they're taxing them in the standard, whatever the corporate taxes are for that, for that area, which I don't know so if they... So percentage of revenue or something like that? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if Cupertino gets anything from Apple other than the fact that there's an awful lot of employees that are probably paying their, their local taxes and the, the, you know, there's a lot of people buying coffee there. So there's yeah. probably an awful lot of, uh, um, you know, uh, so local good. state 
state and local taxes that, that that come out of sales tax as well. So it's not like they're not making any money on, on the fact that there's a big there's a bunch of big campuses there. Um, and again, I, I think that Apple and Amazon, I, I, I think these are just small line items. I think that um, it just adds to one more reason that I mean, I think that personally, I think the South Bay in general is an insane place to build a business at this point. Uh, it doesn't make any sense for any company to keep on expanding in, the, in that area. And, you know, so this is just a small brick in the wall, you know, and I think that we're going to see people starting to, you know, they're already starting to break away. North Carolina is not, not really a, a good example of that, but I think that a lot of folks are trying to figure out how they move to the Midwest, how they move, but how do you create the culture that they want, um, in those areas? And so they, they haven't figured that out yet, but, um, but there's pretty big offices like for Google and Facebook and everything else elsewhere, you know, not in, Apple has a bunch uh, of them. Apple has Seattle and Texas and May and, uh, Massachusetts. It's a whole bunch of places. <laughs> yeah, see, and hey, so. the aluminum smelting, the aluminum smelting is being done in Montreal and Saguenay. Thank there you, you go. There you go. But I think I think we're gonna I think over time we're gonna start seeing a lot of these companies start to move out. I think that these and you know, I think municipalities have to be careful about how hard they push um and, and decide whether it's really worth it because it's not so much the they're not gonna affect Apple. Apple just built a big campus there, but they are gonna affect the next generation of of tech companies that are trying to you know, make Alex. those decisions Can, all the time. Can they make little islands or or floating bases like Cobra Commander used to do in yeah, the ocean? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, but, but those things make a decision. You know, when I when my lease came up in San Francisco, I moved out of San Francisco because of the taxes. I mean, like let's just flat out. I I just wasn't willing to pay the they 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 they, they, they hit you up on not just taxes on sales tax or 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 corporate tax. They tax you on every piece of equipment that you owned that was in San Francisco. And I was just like, nah, we're gonna move. We're gonna we're moving north. You know, like and, and it was literally just that. It was that was the decision that that pushed us over the edge. And so I think that it is something that is worth. You know, it's 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 the thing that companies have to. Or, or municipalities always have to weigh is how much how much are they going to cash in on on the companies that are bringing, you know, an enormous amount of of, of people. You know, you, you you say, well, they're not paying the corporations aren't paying the taxes, but their employees are, <laughs> and their employees are 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 in that location. I mean, you look, you can ask San Rafael how how things went when ILM decided to move to uh, to Letterman, and that was partially over being frustrated with the, the city. So yeah, and, uh, the at the median home price in Santa Clara County, the median, the one in the middle, is now one point three eight million dollars, according to the California Association of Realtors. Not the most expensive uh, place, though. San Mateo County is even a little more expensive. One it's impossible. One point three eight million dollars, and you don't get much for that, by the way. <laughs> yeah. Uh, See, and this this also affects like actually just being able to hire the people they want to hire because if yep. you're unless you're unless you're able to hire this engineer that you think you need for a half a million dollars a year that engineer if he has he or she has options is going to say i can either eke out <laughs> eke out a, a, bare, a bare scrub level existence as a six-figure engineer working for apple who has to live someplace near apple or i can live like a king or a queen uh, on the money that I can get living anywhere else, even Boston for hell's for 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 for, 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 for God's sake. And the, so and the, this the, is be, the becoming a problem. To, 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 just, to, to say nothing of the damage that they're doing to a community by inflating the inflating prices so high that, you know, there, there are people who still have to work at dry cleaners in that town. There's still people who have to work at bagel shops and coffee shops in that town. And when a when a house when they when the, when an apartment costs thirty four hundred dollars a month for just not a great apartment, not a great area. A, a community starts to fall apart and you can't rebuild it very easily. That's all I'm saying. Apple Music crosses 50 million users, according to Tim Cook in an interview with Bloomberg Television on the David Rubenstein show. 50 million paid and trial. Uh, that's up from 40 million paid last month. They're at a growth rate, apparently. According to this uh, story by Apple Insider, to have 60 million paid subscribers by the end of the year, that's with three years of within three years of launch. That's pretty good. They're they're coming on strong compared to Spotify, which has 90 million or will have about 90 million paid users by the start of the holiday season. Of course, it has an eight-year head start. So hey. Apple Music, though, I mean, that's a pretty big success to have 50 million users. Of course, you know, I'd say so. Considering they're they're still fairly new. Right, three years old. That's, yep, yeah. it's the convenience. It's on the phone. You know, it really is a. Part. It's it's just a, again we we talked about on for years on the show that uh, that 
the subscription. I mean, Apple really seeded that market to Spotify. I mean, they they could have flipped that switch five years earlier and owned the market. So it's it's catch up, but it's it's definitely on its way. I think we've definitely turned the corner where you know streaming is now the future. I mean, I think that everyone was trying to figure out how to keep it away, you know, keep from doing it. Um, and, uh, and you know, the, the record industry, I mean, bands and the record industry was all against it. And, uh, now, you know, and, and I think a lot of us knew that this was going to be, it, it works when everybody's doing it, when everybody's paying a little bit, it act, people actually start to make money again. Now, they just don't make any money when, when it's, uh, when it was just a, a small percentage of the market. But I think that we're going to get to a point where a, a very large percent, I think that, both Spotify and Apple could easily hit 100, 150 million subscribers. Wow. Wow. And at that number, um, you know, at, for both of them, the, the music industry stands to probably make more money than they, than, than they ever made in the past. Good. Because they weren't making that much money on radio. Right. Right. Mm. Jason, they might, they, might, they might now have the ability to squeeze Spotify a little bit to say, we really hate, 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 hate your free tier. We would love for you to get rid of it completely because now we have now we have tens of millions of paid users on other services that are kind of replacing the money we would lose, but we think we would lose if we simply decided that Spotify is now a second uh, a, a second party uh, uh, a second party outlet for our licensed music. So because the music industry hates 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 Spotify's free accounts. You got to figure Absolutely it's just them. a matter of time before they do what Apple does, which give you you know one two or three months free trial, but then you have to decide. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure that's what the industry would like them to do. And certainly it's worked well for Apple. Conversion rate's very high, I think. And, you, and, you know, and one of the things that kind of slipped through the cracks was that there were some laws that were passed, um, I think in the last week or two, that basically closed up the loophole around mechanical rights. So mechanical rights were something that you could relatively cheaply um, pay for and do a cover cover song on YouTube. Um, cover Is song that why there are all those cover, those cover songs? <laughs> yeah, so yeah many because of you them. can... Well, and it's like so when you're when you're when you're doing karaoke, you probably wonder why those songs are all uh, close, but not the same band. You know, it's <laughs> right. not they didn't just remove it. They had they had and in Vegas they have whole studios that just produce tons of this for um, you know for their hotels because then they don't have to pay the same uh, royalties. So um, and so the 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 mechanical rights were you know the, literally mechanical rights mean for the paper that was going through the player piano, you know, and it was a very old way that the licensing got set up. And it was kind of a loophole where, you know, whether it was, you know, for all these bands that have been doing covers and then all those cover songs that, that happen around the bands, which again, which sound really close. You look at like a Def Leppard who wouldn't give their, put their stuff digitally out um, because of the fight with their, um, with their label. Uh, there's all this Def Leppard, you know, um, you know, covers that sound <laughs> almost the, exactly the same. And, uh, and so, uh, they, you know, just closed that up. And so I, you know, I, I don't know how it went exactly when it's going to come up. I just saw it go by and I happened to know enough about mechanical rights that I was like, Oh, that's going to change everything. All these bands that, <laughs> that, that are putting stuff out will have to pay much higher ro royalties. Um, and so the, the music industry to, to Andy's point is slowly tightening, you know, all, all of those, um, all those screws, to make sure that they can maximize uh, their uh, return. Interesting. <laughs> but at the same time, the bands are getting to a point where they don't need the labels. You know, this is the, you know, so this is a, you know, if you look at a, a little bands, maybe um, need the labels uh, or really medium sized bands, pop bands need to be produced and they need the money to, to go in. But if you're, uh, you know, a lot of, a lot of bands at this point are getting to a point where they can make, make the money, they can post that stuff directly to Spotify. And if they have a, if they're able to build a social network or if they're already, a successful artist, um, you know, they're able to sidestep the labels altogether. Um, and that's, you know, that's probably another real challenge for the music industry itself, um, is that the, their biggest, you know, if they don't lock people down to a long enough, uh, you know, contract of, of six or eight albums or, or however they're going to define it in the future, you know, an Alicia Keys or, you know, or, or other folks like that don't really, you know, don't really need them anymore. <laughs> you, know, you know, they, you know, they can release the stuff directly or Taylor Swift uh, and Taylor Swift, uh, I think owns a lot of her stuff as it is. I mean, I think she came into that, um, late enough that she figured that out. So, uh, but, uh, you know, a lot of these big bands can, can sidestep, you know, all of that. And I think we're going to see a lot of that. Um, you know, and I think Apple's making that possible as well. While the labels love Apple, Apple's also spending a lot of time working with Drake and, and other, and other artists to, um, really give them a much more direct route to, uh, to publishing. Uh, Jason Snell writing for Tom's Guide. The seven features I want to see in iOS 12. 
What do you think? Always on lock screen for iPhone 10. It's got an OLED screen. Yep. And Android does it. Why not have a... So I see the time and my notifications on my uh, Android device uh, all the time. I want complications. I know some Android phones do it too, but I just want very small, very quick, very glanceable yep. information to tell me what's there and what's going yep. on. Android phones do that as well. Improved do not disturb. Hmm. Let's see. What is he... When he says, he says, when I'm driving, how about filtering out calls that aren't from an approved list? I think you could do that already, right? There's so my thing is that there's VIP, but it's an email uh, level service, which means it only applies to email. Uh, for years, I've asked for VIP to be a contact level service contacts, because yeah. that way I could say like when Leo and Andy call and Alex calls, always make sure I get their phone calls, right. their text messages, their tweets, their everything that comes straight to me. But when these three people that I know just want to sell me something call, I don't even hear those. Right. An improved <laughs> notification center. He says, I don't yeah. think iOS users want all the tweaky possibilities Android offers. But some moves in that direction would be welcome. WebOS was so good. Yeah. Yep. Redesign Control Center. It's Control Center. Every is, version gets is, a new Control yeah, Center. Yeah, yeah. And it's kind of <laughs> got a Control Center. It's kind of gotten out of hand. Uh, 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 more fun in photos. Uh, I don't know about that. More workflows in more places. Now Apple acquired Workflow. Yeah, they're on the Siri team. I don't. Yeah, they haven't really done anything with it. It seems like they just. That was an aqua hire, I guess. The yeah. the engineering team was what they wanted. Augmented reality and maps. Google's just announced that in uh, Google Maps. That would have been such a cool thing last year when they announced AR kits. And we're putting it to work right in right. maps. Right. Could happen. Could happen. Uh, those are the seven. We'll find out June 4th. We're going to see the new features, uh, at least some of them in iOS I did a video yesterday where I just talked about FaceTime because it seems like that's iMessage is such an important app and FaceTime is really not. And if they did things like conference calling, screen sharing, call recording, uh, and put AR kit into Photoshop, almost like they used to have in, sorry, into FaceTime, like they used to have in Photo Booth. I mean, there's just so much fun you could have with that stuff. Is this a thing now, The as we get close to WWDC, putting out a wish list? FaceTime, Always, but they... <laughs> FaceTime wish list from Renee. Yeah, yeah. Here's your chance. It's too late, of course. Apple already knows what it's going to do. And by the way, I do appreciate your use of images from uh, Infinite, Infinity War in your demos. So great. <laughs> <laughs> Only half the face, yeah. It's great. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'd like to share Boy, my that, screen that, with Thanos. You bet. Uh huh. I, I, I more must be doing really great to be able to pay those licensing fees. Wow. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's, it, what's, I forget it's fair use because I'm not, I'm, it's a derivative work. Okay, good. I know. Me too. Nope. Yep. Yep. <laughs> I, yep. I, I, yep. yep. Conference calls, <laughs> AR in FaceTime. You were talking about that. I think that is going to happen. That's that's pretty obviously. So. You know, that's an easy thing to do. That's been around. Yeah, especially if it gets integrated into the camera app. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I, I'm embarrassed to say how much I'm using the uh, that uh, the the st the stock Google camera uh, on my uh, on my uh, my Pixel phone has like downloadable AR content, and so I'm great. embarrassed at how how often I'm putting stormtroopers on my on the table while I'm waiting for my breakfast to arrive at the diner. It's <laughs> Uh, all right. Um, let us take a break, and I would like to come back after the break if you gentlemen would uh, cooperate with your picks of the week. It's up to you. Yes, sir. <laughs> Our show today brought to you by Molecule. I was just, uh, Lisa and I were just talking last night, or maybe it was this morning. She's, this allergies have been uh, rough in Petaluma over the last couple of weeks. She's basically kind of had a, a mild cold for weeks because of all the pollen in the air, except in our bedroom. She's fine because we have a molecule in our bedroom. It's the world's first molecular air purifier that reduces symptoms for allergy and asthma sufferers. It gets rid of stuff that no other technology can get rid of. If you've been using a HEPA filter, that was invented in the 40s. And there haven't been any major innovations in HEPA filters since then. Molecule's PICO technology is so much better. PICO stands for photoelectrochemical oxidation. And it goes beyond the HEPA filter to both capture and eliminate allergens. No more sneezing, mold. That's actually a health issue. Bacteria, viruses, airborne chemicals, including pollutants a thousand times smaller than those a HEPA filter can capture. I love our molecule. We, uh, we have it running in the studio, too, at all times. And I have to say, uh, you know, you can tell when you go out uh, Lisa gets up, her nose is stuffed up almost instantly after she leaves. 
the better. But at least she can sleep well. And we just need to get more, I think, molecules throughout the house. Molecule is awesome. Lisa said she was able to breathe through her nose for the first time in years. And it's funny because uh, we know it works because we had a double blind test. Our nephew stayed in our house for a couple of days when we were out of town. Turned off the molecule. I'm not sure why. We came back the next night uh, and Lisa woke up in the morning. She said, I got, I got a headache. What's going on? I said, oh, they turned off the molecule. It does make a difference. Molecules technology is, was funded by the EPA and extensively tested by real people and then verified by third parties and university laboratories like the University of South Florida's Center for Biological Defense and the University of Minnesota's Particle Calibration Lab. Really pretty, really works, and you get a filter subscription service. Filters re arrive regularly on your doorstep. You don't have to, but you can pair uh, the molecule with your Wi-Fi uh, or Bluetooth, and it will then automatically order filters when it needs them, which is really cool. But you don't have to use the Bluetooth or Wi-Fi capabilities. It's not required. They've got buttons on the top. But if you, if you want, you can. It's the apple of air purifiers. Just beautiful. And it really works. And it's easy to replace the filters. Lisa did it the other day. We They came and she just, boom, they're in. For $75 off your first order, visit Molecule.com, M-O-L-E-K-U-L-E.com, M-O-L-E-K-U-L-E.com. And to get that $75 off, you'll need the promo code MACBREAK. Do take advantage of that. You're going to want more than one. We ended up getting one for Michael's room, one for Lisa's, our bedroom. And one here for the studio, M-O-L-E-K-U-L-E.com, promo code MACBREAK. Really is a worthwhile purchase. Andy Anako, pick of the week, my friend. Uh, mine is a real cheap and real simple. It's uh, almost like an infomercial. Uh, this is the charger to uh, my Olympus camera battery. And this is the power cable that comes with it, which is fine. But when I travel, that means I have to tra travel with like one of these. And sometimes it's not worth it. Uh, however, what I can do instead is I can, instead of packing this uh, bulky cable for seven bucks on Amazon, I was able to buy one of these, oh, look at which that. is a right angle plug adapter that plugs directly look into the back of it That's awesome. and will turn it turn any of these things into like a hangable like wall plug thing oh my god, and so great. it's like my god that's the simplest idea in the world how come i didn't know about this until last week so yes and they're they're cheap they're only like six or seven bucks uh, and guess what I'm, and i'm very very certain that i'm going to lose them because they're really really tiny so after I, I got this one and found out how well it works i bought like four more and so now there's like one in every one of my little ditty bags that i always travel with because it's it's easy to it's see the, the see the other problem is that i don't have to like i, I don't want to have to like scavenge the wall in my office to like unplug like one of these cables every time i need to travel with a charger so with this it's just yeah it's <laughs> seven or eight bucks That's you can't nice, go wrong uh, a few of my chargers you know have the fold out plugs but a few are like that olympus plug where you have the long cord that's great right Two prong right angle plug adapter USE IE6 IEC 60320 stroke C7 receptacle for a NEMA 115P if you need to know. Otherwise known as a C7. Oh, really? C7 with a right angle. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's what they call it? A C7. Well, it's just that, uh, yeah, the, 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 the C. I, I, it's the C7 to, well, I mean, what we call it internally is an, a C7 to, an, to a Edison. That's the yeah, two. Yeah. The Edison so. is the two round ones. No, the Edison the C7 is the two round ones, and oh, that okay. goes in technically into a C a C8, and then the one you plug into your computer is typically a C13 going into a C14 receptacle. You, it, it's uh, and then you know everyone calls them at, in production. They call them IEC cables, but it's like well, there's a C7, a C8, and a C13, a C14, and these are all. What do you call a, important. What do you call a clothespin? Um, the C47, and okay. it, which is interesting because you have the C13 and the C14, but the C47 has no electrical use at all. But it is important to know what that is. And no one really knows why it's called a C47. <laughs> may, I, may I wait, make one quick comment? Yes. Yes. Nerd! <laughs> <laughs> He's a stagehand Obviously nerd. because C746 was taken. That's a gri grip nerd. You're a grip nerd. Well, yeah, you're, you know, th those are crossing. <laughs> one is a grip. A grip nerd, and the other one is an electrical nerd. So yeah. you have to. <laughs> a gaffer nerd. Yeah, exactly. Alex, what, Alex, what's your pick of the week? 
Don't so say C forty seven. I, I, I should have, or P, or or possibly a P thirty eight, which yeah. would not be a plane. Um, anyway, so uh, uh, I've been playing around with how to get the most out of my uh, out of my iPhone, and I still haven't found. I just thought I'd, I'd bring it up again. I think I've I maybe recommended this years ago, but um, I still haven't found an app better than Filmic Pro to you know to take full advantage of my of my camera um, on my phone. So if you're if you're actually want to shoot some uh, shoot content um, on, uh, you know, on your phone, it's just an amazing amount of, of both audio information, uh, video, having control over your color and having that all kind of a heads up if you're going to actually build something out. Um, and, uh, anyway, it's, it's, uh, it's a great app. If you're trying to, if you're going to shoot something and say, well, how much, what can I actually shoot with my iPhone and, and have the controls that you need to, to do that. I think a lot of times when you're using the regular camera or a lot of other apps, you still feel like you're, falling short and so far my tests haven't found something that i'm that i'm happy with happier with um so uh it's been around for a long time and i i, I kind of went through this process over the last couple of weeks of trying to figure out a better one but it's still it's still great <laughs> so if you're thinking about try to how to how to shoot content and you really can shoot an enormous amount of content now with, with just your phone um it's uh you know you need you need an app that's going to actually give you the manual controls that that are probably a little bit more robust than than what you get with the standard uh, camera app and uh, and this is probably it, it still in my opinion one of the best. Jolly good, jolly good. Alex, can I ask you, can I ask you a serious quick question? Now huh? now that there is an actual ship date for the red hydrogen one phone, are you interested in it as a camera or as a controller I'm, to any of your red cameras? Are you buying one? I already have a pre-order. I, yeah, I ordered it the day it was announced. Did you get now? Here's the real question: Did you get the titanium <laughs> model for sixteen hundred bucks, or I did not. I was that was too much. That was just a third. So, so I did not get the titanium model. I I ordered the first day it came out. I I, I went ahead and put it. In. I haven't received it yet, but I but I I'm waiting for uh, waiting for it to arrive. I believe yeah. we're getting a review okay. unit. So we'll. But the oh, problem is, it doesn't. It doesn't. Uh, they have pogo pins on the back, but they haven't yet announced what they're going to put on there. I'm presuming it'll be other red stuff, but. Yeah, I've well, no there's a idea. lens mount, right? So really, the, you able to put any lens on it? In theory. Well, I'm I'm really fascinated by the the process of being able to have stereo FaceTime, you know, between other people, you know. So you, because you have those, you have the two cameras on both both sides, you know. I think that there's going to be some interesting um, interesting possibilities. So it'll be uh, I'm fascinated by it. You know, I, it's I don't it wasn't I didn't jump early with with the first red, but I've I have owned a lot of reds and. Um, and, you know, it's always a cool picture of the future, you know, uh, and, and, you know, for some of us worth uh, uh, worth staying ahead of it. So it's it, it looks like it's going to be cool. I don't I don't have a crazy high expectation of it other than it'll be something new. And, and I think we're going to see some touch of the of the future of, of phones, um, you know, when we see it, because I think that this, you know, moving into this 3D realm, I think is definitely something we're going to see more and more of from these phones. Nice. Uh, Renee Ritchie, pick of the week. So uh, my pick of the week, and I think Andy will appreciate this. Johnny Ive and Apple, for some reason, has not seen it fit to give us purple iPhones yet. I can't explain uh. this. I just have to live <laughs> in it. So Russell Hawley, my good friend Russell Hawley, found these cases on um, Amazon. Ooh. And it, hey. it also it gets rid of my P20 Pro Envy a little bit at the same time. Ooh. And you can get these in pink, in blue, and in purple. And I went and got it in purple. And it gives you like, it's really a minimal case. Uh, and I don't often wear cases. So, you you know, I got to want the purple bad. Um, but you, you put it on and it's very thin. And all it does is really give you this nice metallic, uh, I don't know what the right word is for the way that it refracts the light, but it just, it's a very attractive Iridescent. looking case. Iridescent, yeah, that's a good one. Not holographic, I can't call it holographic, but it definitely, when you get those blues and purples going, nice. uh, it looks really nice. F love yeah. me. Luxury, yes. slim, fit, gradual, colorful, gradient change, color, ultra thin, lightweight, <laughs> electroplating, bumper, anti drop, clear hard, back cover, holder, Load those keywords. purple. <laughs> Smash those keywords. Kardashian, Bieber. 3880, <laughs> Canadian. Yeah. Yeah, that's expensive, but I guess oh, that's like three American dollars. I don't know. Oh, okay. <laughs> that's, that's 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 only eighty percent of a watch band. So yeah. that's you know. yeah, no, no, uh, yeah. So Russell got the blue one, Georgia got the pink one, and I got the purple oh, one. I'm gonna have to get one. Yeah. 
Uh, I should mention that 1Password has put out its first uh, paid update in five years. 1Password 7 uh, for Mac just came out. If Good. you're a 1Password user, you might want to check it out. It is not a free upgrade. It is their first paid upgrade in a long time. Looks like it has some nice features, though. I know a lot of you uh, use it. If if you have a version 6 license, uh, it'll be $50 for upgrade. $49.99, $65 uh, after the special upgrade period. I wanted to mention something kind of crazy, which is, uh, so this this uh, this fella here designs sound, uh, Iliac, or Iliac, and uh, he feels like the sounds available for the iPhone don't take advantage of its speakers. So he analyzed the spectral capabilities of the iPhone speaker and came up with absolutely free, although you could donate a, a euro for a cup of coffee if you really like it. These are ringtones and alarms designed for the iPhone. You want to hear a few of them? The iPhone speaker. They're all very synthy. But he says, you know, because they take advantage of the iPhone's speaker, they're going to sound better. They're very stereo, I notice. I-L-I-J-A-C dot com slash extras. And when you download them, they come as M4R files. I'll just uh, I'll just play one off my phone. They're very Yamaha DX50. <laughs> yeah, they do have that DX50 sound. Like 19, 1980s, like action comedy movie intro music. Yeah, they do. They do. They have that, that feeling. You want to hear some of the alarms sound pretty good. That would be a nice way to wake up. But again, you're not you're not hearing unless you're listening to this show on an iPhone, in which case you're hearing it exactly as it's going to sound. But it's you know that that is an art. I mean, uh, I, I use the Sleep as Android app as a wake up alarm, and it's to, and really fifty percent of it is it has such a great like wake up tone. Yes, where it doesn't it just if you're it if you're about to wake up anyway, up. it will gently. Yes. It doesn't. It never blasts you. Just simply at some point, I know that you will wake up to this. I'm just going to keep going until you wake up. Eli Jack, I L I J A C. Whoa. Hello. I L I J A C dot com slash extras. I don't know. I think they're fun to play with. These are just little samples. You can get the full ringtone or alarm for free. Download it to your phone and try it. Ladies and gentlemen, out of time, but not out of good feelings for our fabulous panel. Mr. Rene Ritchie at imore.com, where he writes and broadcasts and podcasts on a regular basis. Don't forget the Vector Show, uh, imore.com slash Vector. Thank you, Rene. Great oh, to have you on the show. Thank you so much, Leo. Yeah. Andy and Akko will have an announcement in two weeks. Meanwhile, in a couple of weeks, I think. Yeah. Meanwhile, find him at ihnatko.com. Inatko.com, where better writing is available to all. <laughs> and from the Pixel Core, Mr. Alex Lindsay. Follow him on the Twitter, A L A E A L E X L I N D S A Y. Uh, Pixelcore.com. Thank you, Alex. Thank you. Anything you guys want to plug? Alex, do you anything you got coming up? Nothing special. Just more of the same. More Andy and Fast Company soon, or what you doing? Uh, maybe. Maybe. Could <laughs> There's be. something I'm working on. Possible. Could be. Could happen. Renee, you don't have to plug anything. We know where to find you. Unless you want to. Who's on Vectors uh, I, recently? Um, who's on Vector? Oh, well, I have, I have some good folks coming up um, this week. I, on the, the latest video I just put up was I finally got the keyboard failure on my MacBook no. Pro. No. My 2016 oh. MacBook Pro. Oh, I'm so, so I did, sorry. So I did a video trying to trying to fix it and, and hilarity you, ensued. And did you fix After it? After testing oh. three MacBooks. Um, a little. A little? I mean, it's, it's if I hit it hard from the right angle, it, it's a control key, so it really only bugs me in terminal and in the emoji oh, interface. No. Um, but I'm going to take it into Apple and uh, see what happens. It's still under yeah, You know, that's that's really surprising. I was pretty sure that Apple would have made sure you get that earlier before everyone else so you could write about it. <laughs> no, I, you know, that that's the funny thing is people are like, oh, it happened. And like, I, I would prefer to have every problem right away because <laughs> right, like it's right. the same thing. All, all these shows are better if we have the problems. Right, right. Because I can try to like troubleshoot it. I can try to fix it. I can say what we're, when you don't have it and people are asking you for a fix it's really frustrating 
And I just I just want to take a certain amount of pride that I, I didn't jump on the uh, MacBook keyboard hatred bandwagon. I put the wheels on that wagon. <laughs> I was there on day one. He bolted them on. Folks. I was greasing the axles. <laughs> hey, I, well, my thing I, is like, I actually traded in my MacBook uh, Pro. I couldn't take it. So I have I have a couple of them because I have review units too, and I use a couple of them all the time. I've had it on the 2016 one, the 2017 one, still fine, but it's newer. But my thing is, and I say it at the end of the video, is it, whether it gives me a problem or not. I think the fact that people like Andy uh, can't use it is a problem in a single vendor product. Like you just you can't have divisive single vendor products because right. you can't just go to HP or Dell right. and get their version. You've got to get it, make it for everybody. I'm sure, that's why they still sell the 15 inch, but uh, you know the the old one, <laughs> the 2015 15 inch. We'll Mine see. Mine still works great. <laughs> I know. I love my. I love it. I love. I use it every day. So when I took to Japan, I was going to take a Windows machine, and I finally, I, at, at the last moment, I said, "I can't do it. I can't do it. Can't do Windows, man. I can't." All right, uh, we are going to uh, fold this operation up and put it in a box for next <laughs> week. <laughs> it's a it's a box show, like a box lunch in yeah, Japan. Yeah, like a bento <laughs> box. No, it's yes. more like Charlie McCarthy. We're going to just fold you guys up, put them in a box. And uh, we'll take them out next week. We do Mac Break Weekly on Tuesdays right after iOS today, usually around 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern Time, 1800 UTC. If you want to watch live at twit.tv slash live. If you do that, please join us in the chat room, too. You can really be a part of the show. Be the feedback to the show. Uh, that's irc.twit.tv. You can also get on-demand audio and video of that of this show and every show we do at our website. In this case, twit.tv slash MBW. And of course, if you subscribe in your favorite podcast application, then you'll get it automatically every single week, the minute it's available. Thank you, everybody, for being here. We'll see you in a bit now. Uh, but, well, you can't. If you're watching live, you can stay tuned for security now. But for the rest of you, get back to work because you know what? Break time's over. Thank you, everybody. Except for you, Yay. Steve Gibson. You're just starting. Except for you, you're just getting to work. <laughs>